You know, there's more. There's more on Trump Week this week with Tim Apicella and Cynthia Sinclair. I want to cover two additional issues, okay? Because they're so pressing for this week. The first one is immigration policy. Yeah. What do you think about Trump and immigration policy this week, Tim? Well, Cuccinelli should have just said, show me the money. Because that's what he wants to see is, give me your tired and your poor who could stand on their own two feet and who will not become public charge. Crass. Crass. Yeah. But you know what? what an abuse of but, the poem and the whole notion of, of allowing people, the tired, the, the huddled masses, uh, yearning uh, to, be, to breathe free. When I hear that poem, it reaches me every time. It, it never fails. And he abused it so badly. And, and he is Trump, by the way. By the way, if you look at his surname, I'm pretty sure his grandparents or probably his grandparents came to this country with not a whole lot. In their, in their satchel. Yeah, and he dumps on them. Right. His own family, he's abusing his own family. Comment? Um, I, well, it's hard for me to say that because I don't know as I think that they should automatically get free health care and free services and all those things. But by the same token, I don't think that they should have to, to pay to come in either. Well, he's cutting and them these off. people are working. He's saying, They're I'm not working. giving them anything. Right. Well, I mean, they're not. They're working. You don't working. get the green card if you've been on public assistance. Right. Yeah. So and you can. So, it's like in China, the social quotient business. But, if you violate this rule about taking public assistance, no green yeah. card for you. But you have to realize, and you just said it. There's it's, this isn't just a conservative issue. There's a lot of people in the, D the Democratic Party that feel the exact same way as well. Wait a minute. I'm not sure I support public assistance and free education for those that. I haven't gotten their citizen they citizenship. They need to come here, become Americans, and, and, and then they can the get system. it. Yeah, and if they this come is, through the system, he's then... tapped into something that has been under the underbelly of immigration for decades. I'll tell you something: what he's doing, he's, he's doing divisive things on the Democrats. He's trying to get right. people within the Democratic grouping to disagree with each other. It will work, right. and it's working. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. But, but the, the point is, it's going to help him do that. In the long run. Yeah, he's going to gain with some With all people. the distractions, right. with all the distractions going on, he's been quietly having public hearings and meetings. He's done this by the books. This didn't just come up in the last two days. Right. He's, he's gone through a process that no one's paid attention to because we've been, we've been taking our eye off the ball through distractions. Yeah, the press has to pay attention, and we have to pay attention. He has That's why I'm, I'm said. happy you guys are willing to do a, a post-show show. Okay. okay. The next, the next, uh, the next commentary is on the issue of Israel. What happened with uh, Trump and Netanyahu and the two um, Muslim uh, Omar. Congress, Congress, uh, Omar and Congress Tami. women who yep. uh, wanted to go to Israel. So what happened first? Well, first he just tweeted that it showed weakness for them to be allowed to come there, and the very next thing, twenty minutes later, or two hours later, something like that then they were banned from coming to Israel. Netanyahu said, okay, then you can't come. You know that we have 38 billion in military aid goes to Israel? You know that? That's the largest in history. What price, takes... what price keeping the Middle East stable? Right, What's exactly. it worth? Uh, okay, what do you think? So they were banned from the visit. Wait, then Netanyahu reversed his stance and said, okay, never mind. You're right, it's wrong. Barry Nadler said, it is utterly egregious for the Israeli government to deny entry to two sitting members of the U.S. Congress. So all of this backlash comes out. So Netanyahu reverses his stance and Representative Tlaib, anyway, turned him down and said, I'm not going. Under this kind of oppressive conditions, I'm not even so, going to go. Okay, Israel would then allow them in. Mm -hmm. And then they but, said, but, sorry, we're not so coming. One of them or both of them? I, I, I only have heard of one of them that said she's not going to go. Comment? Well, it was on her humanitarian request to see her grandmother in, in the right. Palestinian territories. Um, when you deny the Congress people to go in, um, and they hadn't, that, they hadn't decided that, Trump bullied, it, bullied right. somebody to say, don't let them in. Right. Well, he said well, he had talked to him. He bullied Netanyahu very hard. Netanyahu has been his buddy. Well, his election's and, coming up. And yeah. they spoke about it. He well, did I, say. I think Netanyahu's finished in Israel. So this is, right. he's. He's in the 13th inning already. And what's interesting is you think, well, you know, if we don't let these two in, um, they're going to vote against uh, all the aid that we send to Israel. But then I got to tell you, they're both active in the, in the BDS, the, you know, boycott, uh, divest, and I forget what the S stands for. 
um, you know, the, the organization that wants to boycott everything with Israel. They're going to vote against that bill anyway, guarantee. So it's a mixed bag. This is, this is highly nuanced. It's, uh, it's not clear one way or the other. Um, what's clear is that, is that Trump started the problem. He started this new divisive uh, you know, initiative. Uh, exactly. he's, now he's dividing the Israelis already. Um, exactly. Uncouth. He's divided now Congress. Right. He's already been trying to do that. And guess what? He's doing it a little bit more. Yeah. And uh, this is not a good strategy. And, you know, Israel's been quite an ally of ours for many, many decades. Yeah. So he's, you know, this is the same thing as moving the, what is it, the embassy to Jerusalem. Right. It's very provocative and results in violence. I mean, anyone can see that. Was it really necessary for him to do that? They don't have a policy. And I guess let, let's close on that note. They don't have a policy about Israel, about immigration. It's just all hate and, and, and divisiveness. They don't have a policy with China or North Korea or Venezuela or Europe. It's just all about the apprentice and, and firing people and making everyone unhappy. And all we can do is follow it and articulate how we feel. Thank you, Cynthia. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Jay. Thank you, Jay. Yeah.